Hello everyone who might be watching this. Welcome to the podcast. I'm introduced. I uh, this is for trans theory, which is not a theory. It's a fact. It's not this is not just a game theory. It's a real factual proven fact. Um yeah. <laughs> um, I am joined by the legend herself, trans Minecraft YouTuber and like content creator, Good Ash Vibes, the most Hi, famous and well known trans creator, totally. Actually, I don't think so, but like um, No, I don't think so either, but yeah. something like that, something like that. Yeah. So <laughs> I'm gonna get into like how Ash and I know each other because we're actually like friends. So if you guys yes. are a fan of Ash Vibes, please be starstruck over me by association. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe then I can gain like friends in college. Let's go. Come um, on, come on, friend. Yeah, come on, come to me. <laughs> um, so first, before we get to the questions, I'd like you to introduce yourself to this podcast. Uh, well, I'm Ash. Uh, I go by Good Ash Vibes online, but uh, I do Minecraft videos, and I've been doing it for like over ten years. And it's it's been a journey. I've met a lot of people, and yeah, it's been <laughs> including you. So yeah, yeah, it's awesome. You make a lot of good friends. Yeah, I honestly agree. As somebody who makes like who's made Minecraft videos for around almost eight years so kind of almost as long i was like a youngster when i started i was like 12 years old i was a complete menace when i started yeah <laughs> children are weren't we all little yeah so. we were, like kids are like <laughs> children are menaces but that's a topic for another day but, like <laughs> kids are like yeah um but um yeah so that's honestly true you make a lot of good friends from this and ash and i share one thing in common in particular and it's that we are both we are both the Minecraft YouTuber transgenders. <laughs> That's <laughs> that true. Really it's very true. Yeah. We are both trans girlies. Woo. Um, oh, yeah. yeah. I'm going to get into the podcast. It's okay. Podcast questions. Number one. Oh, wait. I shouldn't read it like that. Um, did you start your channel before you came out? If so, what was the coming out experience like? Yeah, uh, yeah. I started my channel before I came out, and I think that's what kind of made uh, YouTube so special because it kind of like making content kind of created, like made me, it was like a place where I could be myself, you know? Yeah. And uh, I guess it was the only way that I could like tell or like be myself. And it was like, I I went through my transition all online, you know, you're, you're able to see it, but, um, and it was it was scary because um I didn't know how people would take it, but yeah, I just you know being trans is really hard, and like trying to like figuring out you know yourself is really hard, so um yeah. being able to do YouTube was like helpful. I mean, yeah, that's all very true. Like, as somebody who made YouTube, it was definitely a place where I felt like I could be my full authentic self. Like, growing up there, I was like, liking pink, you're not allowed. And I got bullied a lot for liking pink. So making my channel was like how I could like make a pink universe and everything was just pink because right. as a child, all I knew is that pink was my favorite color and I had to hide it. But I also knew I didn't fit in with gender norms. So I definitely made myself like do a lot of stereotypically feminine things and it was great and then when i realized i was trans it was definitely something i came out to my online friends and then i made a video like i my audience knew before my family knew <laughs> or oh uh, yeah knew. same like yeah like and then my family knew and i eventually since i was still in high since i was still in like middle and high school at this point when i came out i ended up having i transitioned publicly and i don't know if i would have done it without youtube because YouTube, whenever, like, UHC, for example, which is something you were a part of, I remember I would watch it and I would get this for it because I couldn't be in it. <laughs> it, was, <laughs> it was super funny. Um, it was kind of... But yeah, so I definitely think, like, watching a bunch of Minecraft YouTubers, like yourself, I watched you when you were, like, like, when you did, like, I'm trying to think of what I watched you from first, like, there was a lot of things. I think I first... No, but I didn't first see you in Harmony Hollow, I think. 
Like you were definitely like one of my first introductions to like the trans community, but I forgot where uh -huh. I, I forgot the first video I saw from you. But it might have been you might have it might have been that never have I ever from like eight years ago that you were in with like the cube. Okay. Yeah. 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 Um. Yeah. But like that was like yeah. So yeah, it's definitely something like you can get like your personal. You're able to like be yourself on YouTube, and it's like when you create your channel, it's your identity. It's who you are. No one can take that away from you. So that's something I definitely really like, and I think that's why it's almost easier to like come out on there than anywhere else. No, yeah, because the people in your life, you know, you're always with them, and they know you as a certain person and have expectations and stuff like that. Um, so it can, that can be kind of hard to do that, but like with YouTube, you can, or making content kind of like became something, um, that like I could express like my true feelings and thoughts and yeah. just have fun. So it's definitely a place where you could be yourself when in your personal life, you probably can't be as much of your authentic self. It's yeah. Like, it's a kind of like. I think, yeah, starting my channel was kind of like a coping mechanism for a lot of different things. And you definitely see me struggle with self-identity. It's definitely all public on my channel. It's my, my who I am kind of grew and developed as like I started when I was like 12 or 13 and now I'm 19. So, yeah. And yeah. You started when you were not as young, but I don't think, but. Yeah. But. Yeah, it's super fun, though. You meet so many cool people and, you know, that support you for you. And yeah, Minecraft's a cool community. Always has really been. Met on this SMP called Alpha SMP. And I admit, at first, I was really starstruck and was just like fangirling. And I was like, oh my God, is she going to. I was like intimidated because I'd watched you for so long. And I was like, oh my God, are we going to be friends? And now we are. So it's lovely. Yeah. <laughs> Woo. Honestly, and that whole SMP is like really accepting of like the community. And they're all. And they're, yeah. That was definitely the most positive experience I had with an SMP. Like, that was definitely. <laughs> If I was gonna rank SMPs on like the group of people, that one would be like number one. <laughs> so I right? That one. I'm the same. Yeah. We are. It was just fun because we all get got to like just chill out and, and be all, creative. We all, I think, most of us for the most part got along like super well. Like we definitely all yeah got super well. Like yeah. I agree. Mm -hmm. Uh, this one I know the answer to because every time we film together, we talk about it, I feel like. Okay. But do you talk about being trans frequently on your channel? Um, yes. In ways. Yeah, uh, definitely. I posted a lot of videos on it, but um, I think now, like, I kind of just try and be myself and yeah. um, that, like, if people support me, they support me. If not, then... Oh, well, like, say the thing. Yeah. I myself, I personally don't talk about it unless I'm in videos with you, I guess is what it is. Because, like, yeah. I, like my characters, like, I make Minecraft role plays, right? And, like, my characters that I play in them, I usually don't, like, give them an esta- I don't usually establish whether or not they're trans because I feel like- <sighs> The, my opinion, the best way to accept trans people is to just, like, let them be, like, the gender they I identify as and, like, not, like, classify every five seconds that they're different. Which is something yeah. I do personally. I don't like to, like, I like to just, like, consider myself another woman. Which I know there obviously are differences, right? I'm not saying that being a trans woman is the exact same as being a woman. There, we have different, we have some different experiences. But, like, we are, like, we are women. Both of us are women. Yeah. I think we can both agree on that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, honestly, I think that, like... Like, the sooner we can, like, just, like, not see trans people as different. Because, like, seeing them as different leads to thinking they're weird, which leads to prejudice. <laughs> so, yeah. like, when we can see them as, like, normal people who just want to be themselves like ever and be themselves like everyone else, I think that we will be golden. Which is why I don't focus on it that much. But I do acknowledge, I do like to acknowledge it because I do think it's important to like use our platform for good and like fighting for good causes if one comes up. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Definitely. Um, how do you think being a trans content creator has impacted your success in the industry? 
I don't feel like it's impacted. Well, I feel like it's being trans kind of like, um, I think it took away from content creation for me a lot. Cause, uh, just like, I think in ways I got to like, uh, I got to meet really cool people that like, and I got to be able to, sorry. I, <laughs> it's okay, don't worry. I'm a little nervous. No, Cause like, I don't, I don't, <laughs> I don't really talk about being trans that often. So it's like, yeah, well, like okay. kind of like this. So like, anyways, okay. So, um, what was the question? Just so I can. If you don't want to answer it, by the way, you can ask me to skip the questions. It's no, you're fine. You're fine. Um, do you talk about being trans frequently on your channel? Or no, oh, that's the one we just answered. My bad. <laughs> um, no. Sorry. How do you think being a trans content creator has impacted your success in the industry? Um, I think by the people I got to meet and that like, because like, there were people who finally accepted me. And I think that was like, kind of like the biggest thing for me. Cause like, I really wanted to just like be myself. And when I finally got to show that, and I got one of the first S and P's that like, um, kind of helped me just like feel more in my own skin is probably Lux S and P. It was this all girl S and P. Yeah. And yeah, that was awesome. yeah and i made yeah i made a really uh good friend from from it called lex her, she, her name is lex Lou. um owner. yeah the owner of the yeah. smp and she let me into the all girl smp and i was going through a really tough time at that point because i was fine i finally like said that i was trans and i was you know, starting to make that transition and um, to be in an s &P that like accepted that and was like something that was like super yeah. awesome and just like. Uh -huh. Groups like Lux and UHC, I think, are I'm glad they exist because they accept like trans people into them. From what I've seen, I was never invited to any of them because when they existed, I was like, I know, buddy. <laughs> Still yeah, like am, but like I don't even know if I was out when they existed because I don't remember timelines. But like, yeah, I think that's really good that like there are groups like that are better for like all women that are including trans women because w trans women are a part of womanhood. They experience some of the same prejudices that normal women face, including their own list of like. Like, when I hear transphobia, I honestly just think, like, another form of, like, sexism and misogyny. Like, you know, like, trans misogyny is what I like to think of, call it. Because, like, it is kind of, it is kind of prejudice on you for being your gender, you know? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And I think it's good to agree and, like that. And I mean, being trans, I feel like, has also kind of, like, um... I guess when you talk about success, like there's been like kind of struggles. I feel like there's a lot more struggles just cause, well, more cause the fact that like, never mind. <laughs> it's okay, don't worry. It's all right, don't worry. You, you wanna just go to the next question? Yeah. Um, I guess I will answer this a little bit. I feel like being trans has, like, maybe made it so I'm less successful, but it's more so because of the fact I'm a trans woman. Because, like, not to my own horn, but I pass pretty well. <laughs> anyways. <laughs> yes. Anyways. Like, I feel like definitely like, it's harder to be successful at being, like, a woman in the Minecraft and gaming space from what I've seen. And, like, being a trans woman in particular, I definitely think... Like, it was something that may, like, maybe if I was a guy still and I, like, never came out, I would have been, like, a million subscribers, but I wouldn't have been happy that way. So, overall, it's, like, not something I'm that upset about. <laughs> like, you know? Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, I, rem I remember once, like, um, when I was streaming that, like, um, I would, you'd get, like, this person, like, I don't remember if you remember the streamers that would go onto other people's streams and like record their streams. Oh, 
oh and then God. send their people to like hate on them or like oh say a certain God. word. So, uh, I, once I think I was streaming on YouTube and this guy was like sending his fans or whatever to see like really like transphobic stuff. Oh, <laughs> oh my God. And it was, it was kind of like a, it was kind of a big thing. And like, so that was like probably one of the like negatives I felt that like yeah. from being trans on, you know, and making content and yeah. being a part of the community, it I can it's hardships i definitely think like being trans like is kind of like a political thing unfortunately like like conservative like right-wing people are like oh trans people aren't real blah 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 like it's definitely like become a political thing which kind of sucks like the entire yeah. feminist and like trans and like gay and like lgbtq entire movement has become like political when it really shouldn't be in my opinion and it's like they're like really like there's like the conservative side of like creators on youtube like i've come across it before and i was definitely like and i was yeah. reading i remember one time i was like creating i was like i after a video I posted, I was like, ooh, I was watching a video, and then, like, a conservative video came and recommended, and without realizing, I clicked on it, because it was just a commentary video, and commentary YouTube is kind of entertaining, let's be honest. And then I read the comments, and someone's like, oh, she thinks she's a, tr she thinks she's a girl, and all the replies were like, it's one of those, like, people who thinks trans is real, and I was like, holy moly. <laughs> the like, it's like the conservative comment sections. Like, I feel like you definitely so negative, get an that, like, agrees with you. So it's yeah. like, I feel like, 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 your audience, probably, like, our audience, because we're trans, probably our personal audience isn't gonna watch us if they hate, like, trans people. But there are, like, but, like, at the same time, like, people who hate trans people are gonna build up an audience who also hate trans people. <laughs> like, yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. It's definitely a problem. Um, well, you kind of just answered this question, but do you get a lot of, like, transphobic hate? Well, yeah. Well, no and yes, because I think I have built up, like, a little community, like you said, that, like, yeah. um, most of my, like, the viewers that I have are probably, you know, LGBT themselves, you know, LGBT+. plus. So, um, like, m most of my comments aren't very ne haven't been very negative obviously like with uh getting views or like doing stuff with people like you're gonna get a few people who send hate here and there but um i just try and ignore it and yeah keep positive i definitely like for me it's like i definitely feel like i don't get much transphobic hate because people i don't get like pe for most part like i used to get a lot of like i used to get a lot more haters than i do now for some reason which is weird because like i didn't grow much on youtube until like 2022 i gained like 700 subs thank you alfea and roleplay Come on. <laughs> um but like i feel yeah like i just i think like I feel like I get less hate because that community, I built up a community that's like accepting and I feel like it's like they're, you're less likely to get like, I feel like nowadays it's like, it's be, luckily we're getting to, I mean, we're getting to, well, there's a lot of trans hate like on like Twitter and everywhere that really sucks. But on YouTube, if people want to hate you for being trans, they're going to make a whole ass video on you. <laughs> I feel like it's yeah. gonna be like they're like people who are just gonna comment. I feel like don't have, don't I don't know. Like I haven't gotten much like transphobic comments from like just like random strangers who don't know anyone or anything. I feel like it's kind of just. It's definitely like if they're trans and if they hate trans people, they're not gonna support my content, which is like they're just not gonna support my content, which is like not a good option either. I wanna be I wanna be a big YouTuber. Come on, everybody. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. So, like, <laughs> I honestly how do you do you, how do you handle the negative comments you get? Um well honestly now I just I don't really respond to them. I think often like even uh, when it, in the beginning of content creation for me, I don't, I would respond to some here and there, just like as fun or whatever. Cause yeah. like if I have a, something funny to say, 
But yeah. for the most part, I kind of just ignore because, like, yeah. thanks for the view, at least, you know? Yeah. They commented, the interaction. <laughs> like, yeah. come on, comment on all of my videos, please. <laughs> you know? I like, actively ask for, like, hate because of, like, the right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, guys, hate like, me. I definitely interacted with the comments. I remember one time, this was like in 2017, I was like 13 or 14. Like, there was this channel, right? And they like uh -huh. renamed their channel to my channel name at the time, because I've been through like nine names. Hater at the end. They put my profile picture at the, in the front with an X through it, right? Wow. And it was like, oh my god. And they would comment on all my videos, like, leaving hate. And I was like, and I was like, and I was actually really excited. Because I was like, wow, someone cares. Right. <laughs> That's what I was like. And then, <laughs> and, but I was like, troll the comments by replying. And then one time I just clicked their channel and it was just a drawing video. So it wasn't like anything. And I was like, sad they didn't like make actual content on me. <laughs> but, and like, one time I made a role play where, like, my character, like, died at the end, but then she, like, wasn't dead. Like, she was buried alive in the next episode. And then, and then they, t and for some reason they took these role plays super seriously. They're like, oh, yes, she died. Let's celebrate. I was like, okay, then. <laughs> And then, <laughs> not that. But then, when I got when I was like not dead, they were like, "You liar! I got my hopes up." And I was like, "Jesus!" <laughs> Dang! <laughs> Come on! Like, like, <laughs> like you know, like it's definitely hate can kind of be funny in a way. Like, I yeah. Really, the only reason I like get upset about like transphobic hate in particular is because it it negatively impacts the community as a whole. The like people, and it makes me sad. The, like people think of us as like our identities is invalid and it definitely sucks but like when it's to me personally like i don't get up that like me personally i feel like because like yeah because it's like it's like um it's like it's like wow you're just i'm just like wow they're just mad that i'm living my best life <laughs> yeah yeah exactly yeah um, where do you think you're included in, like, feminism as, like, a trans woman? Um. I'm assuming, you are a feminist, I should ask that. Oh, yes, yes. absolutely. I love women. <laughs> I love, love. I think, well, the thing is, like, I try and be respectful as, my, as a trans woman myself. Just, like, not, like, stepping on, just, like, Cause like with my girlfriends, I try and like make sure that like I'm a good girlfriend too, you know. Yeah. And like in my bag, like I'll have like some just like girly things to help them out. Yeah, <laughs> like, and like, cause like we don't. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. I I know that like I'm not here with the period, so. Like, I've never, like, bought, like, a period product, but I have thought about, like, if going period product shopping, even though I couldn't use it, but be, like, gender euphoria. But right now, I can't, so I can't, I can't right. afford to waste money in something I can't use. <laughs> but one day, you know, one day. We'll then, see, we'll see. Yeah, then I can just... <laughs> just be like, hey, my girls, I got you girls, I'm a girl. <laughs> I'm a girl who doesn't have a uterus, so okay, Chris, so but I'm here to help. I'm here to help. <laughs> you know, like, dude, honestly, dude, dude, honestly, dude, I feel like, dude, like, at one point in my school, like, I was kind of embarrassed to not get a period because I was like, like, I know it's kind of a blessing in disguise. That's what, like, all my, like, trans, like, like, gender therapy doctors have always told me, like, you should be blessed that you're trans because you don't have to get a period. But then it was like, like, I would get kind of dysphoric because, like, all the girls would be like, I need help with my periods and i would just be like oh i can't be like that yeah and there was a time where like everyone in my class in one year i feel like had to leave for like period problems and i was like are they gonna notice that i'm the only girl that hasn't had a single period problem this in this class are they gonna notice that <laughs> i feel yeah. like nobody cares that much but that was my thought at the time <laughs> yeah yeah yeah. yeah, I feel I you. I think we're included in feminism. Like, we should be. Like, TERFs, JK Rowling. Well, I, I think everyone should, you know? Like, yeah, we, we should just respect women and <laughs> respect like, women. 
I feel like, <laughs> like, my problem with, like, when people, TERFs, like, in particular, is not even just for, like, trans people. Like, feminism should literally include everyone. It literally means equality for everyone. <laughs> for everyone, regardless of but, gender. So why are we excluding people and saying they're not allowed to be feminists? <laughs> You know? Yeah. Well, I'm. Oh, well, I'm hoping that's the the stride of yeah. just like accepting everyone and just like yeah. letting people be people, whatever they want to do or be, or just like <laughs> nothing matters. Like, there's so many crazier and tough things going on in the world right now. Yeah. With just like society is collapsing. So yeah, it's. <laughs> Like, people are, like, people, like, people are looking, like, it's, like, this, it's, like, the world is getting exploded, is literally blowing up, and people are looking at trans people, like, you are a big... No, the, the ice caps melting, we got the ice yeah. caps melting, we got it, it's what do like, we got? Um, like, giving me vibes of, like, super villains trying to destroy the world, like, end the world, <laughs> and then there's just a trans person on the street walking by, watching it all happen, and people are staring at you, like, you are the problem. <laughs> Um, yeah exactly like, yes <laughs> yeah <laughs> exactly yeah like um come on guys how do you think gender stereotypes and gender boxes and norms impacted you like realizing you were trans in the first place <laughs> well i think for me like it was just like i never fit into like like, every time I remember just growing up, just, like, being grouped with the boys in a way sort of thing and just, like, kind of, like, bothered me. <laughs> no, same. Gym class, you were, you were messed up for that one, gym class. <laughs> like, yeah. boys versus girls PE, what the hell? Like, that is just honestly, like, we just... Like, like every time they'd like, like be like, you were gonna be on the boys team in PE, or you're on the boys side, or even when they yeah. like, ladies first, I'd be like, but I should be a lady. Right, <laughs> like, exactly. Yeah. Like, like, like me first. That, like, like anything that like what, like anything that like you needed to be a lady for, I would be like, in, like dysphoria is hard to a hard feeling to describe. It's just like a feeling of like pain. <laughs> like yeah. being being conformed to one group and it's like in one hand dysphoria sucks right and, and like gender norms suck for making us feel it but on the other hand i wouldn't have realized i was a woman if they didn't exist probably yeah so kind of like okay. love hate relationship yeah and it's like you just like the ick and like the pain like the feeling of pure like depression and <laughs> sadness and upset and anger and just everything you feel yeah. like when you get when you have dysphoria and you like have to like do something with the gender you don't feel comfortable as like like, even, like, bathrooms and stuff, like, boys' bathrooms, those are disgusting. <laughs> like, that's one of the many reasons I'm thankful to be trans, because, like, pair women are a lot more mature and better in them, <laughs> just pointing that out. Like, exactly. Yeah. Like, I felt dys <laughs> Like, when you feel dysphoria, like, my dysphoria, I feel like, was almost entirely, like, social. Like, I don't feel like it had, like, much bodily dysphoria. I just felt, like, extreme, like, pain and, like, discomfort and, like, it like utter like anger and rage and like i wanted like i, I was i would literally like be in i feel like i was like like you know what the feeling when you're about to cry but like you can't cry <laughs> like that's kind of the feeling i kind of got from like having to do like be like be considered one of the boys if you get with him yeah yeah, yeah like i feel you yeah it's not fun yeah like well, how old were you when you, like, came out, if you don't mind me asking? That's not on the question. Um, as trans? Yeah. Um, I came out really late, though. Okay. Um. So you had to go through all of high school? Yeah. I went through a lot, and yeah. it's super dark time. <laughs> 
becoming <laughs> being able to come out like before you're an adult is kind of like a newer thing i feel like like at my school like how like when my elementary school they'd like tell you what like trans was and it was like like people like knew what trans was and were like and they'd be like they'd be like okay class here's what gender is you're either a boy or a girl and the kid would probably raise a hand and be like but when you're an adult you can have a surgery to change your gender and they'd be like yep yeah, but that's not relevant for now like that's what people just that's like all the trans was like known as like when i was growing up it's just like you can get a surgery when you were an adult <laughs> yeah i didn't know about all this other stuff <laughs> like but okay how do you think your content may have impacted like young trans viewers or impacted your channel i mean it definitely impacted me which is why i wrote this <laughs> question um yeah. well <laughs> well i think it's been nice like a, a lot of people have told me that like it's helped them with their experience and their um you know figuring out who they are and what they feel comfortable with and i think that's what is the coolest thing about you know how i ex was able to express myself by creating content and uh i did like cute things like i i remember i was doing like a something on harmony hollow where i was like talking about um like a different like gender like i was reading through like um one of these books i forgot where it is abcs of lgbt or something and it just like talks about gender and uh all of that stuff and yeah matt wash hates <laughs> but <laughs> but i was just for me it was just about like helping people like be themselves and do whatever they want you know and because like being human is a hard experience so like yeah. like definitely like, people are like so judgmental it's like crazy <laughs> like, yeah Dude, I definitely think, like, you and, like, B, if you know her, were, like, the biggest yes. like, trans, like, impacts to me. Like, with people, like, a group watching, I was like, hey, wait, they're trans. And I was like, hold up, me too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, you don't, I feel like, uh, before, like, YouTube, like, I didn't have, like, many people, like, representation i guess yeah. so like um <laughs> b was like the first representation for me like of like someone who was trans yeah. so like that was pretty like yeah. it was nice to see that because yeah. <laughs> like it kind of it definitely after that you can like tell like if my if you could if i had all my videos unprivated because <laughs> i'm rebranding you could literally like tell like the the shift right. I made and my country. <laughs> no, no, no. Well, I <laughs> did I. Well, I guess I rebranded my name, y'all. But like, I, so I'm trying to be more PG because, like, oh, I, I mean, I don't, God. I don't want to curse as much, yeah, anyways. I so I feel like, dude, that's the thing. Like, I curse too much. Like, I used to be PG because it was like my parents were like, "Child, you are a child, so you must not be child friendly." And I was like, "Okay." And then I got older, and I was like, "You know what? Let me just curse. Let me say every swear word under the sun that's not like outright like a slur. Like, I won't say slurs, but I will say swears. That's where I draw the line." Yeah. So, yeah. It's like, but yeah, I definitely think like being PG like is something like I feel like it's good for branding, but it is. <laughs> it sucks. Good. This is where YouTube sucks. This is where YouTube <laughs> sucks. They expect you to be they like we can be ourselves unless we want to make a career out of this, then we have to filter ourselves through. <laughs> My humor is very like dark and know, stuff. No, so like I I like <laughs> So I want to like curse and say yeah. crazy stuff, but like this, it's not, it's, it's not what you can do now with yeah. Minecraft. And, and I get it because like, Minecraft I don't want to be, yeah. like, it's young. So like, I don't, I don't want to like, I definitely, you need to presence, didn't you? <laughs> 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 when you were the elf, the green elf. Yes. 
Yeah. Dude, honestly, did you, was that like did you change that as like a part of your like trans identity? Was that like a part of like or like I think I think yeah. It's definitely um it it just didn't really feel like me sort of thing. It's yeah. weird because it was now like you do all this Barbie content and that definitely really yeah romantic. like you're like like Barbie movie two cast Ash is like trans Barbie lead version yes <laughs> like, I am character. the Minecraft trans <laughs> trans Barbie yes dude honestly <laughs> dude honestly if Barbie I just as Barbie for Halloween I was like let's go like honestly Barbie movie should put us on like we should there should be like an entire you know what they should make like a trans girl group that's just like in the Barbie second Barbie movie and it can be us and like any other like trans creator I love that Barbie. yeah um <laughs> dude Barbie is definitely like definitely like such a feminist thing now when it didn't used to be like when I was yeah. little like when I, my parents like accept me for being trans eventually but like when my mom was alive like now Ash is my internet mom if you guys didn't know like hello mother <laughs> she is mother but like, when my mom was alive like when I was younger right she random when I was at school just got rid of all my Barbies I was like what happened and she was like Barbie is sexist and I, and I didn't understand at the time. I was like, she doesn't want me to have Barbie because I'm a boy. Like, I thought she was transphobic, but apparently it's just because she thought Barbie was sexist. <laughs> okay, yeah. But, like, yeah. But, yeah. I just like Barbie because she's all pink and, like, yes, I don't know why I like know. pink now. Pink is my favorite color. It's always this way. Like, I'm I vibing. When, I remember when I was little, like, me being closeted was telling everyone my favorite color was blue, which I do like light blue. I like like pastel blue, but like, like dude, yeah. my mom was like severely transphobic, and you know what? You know how hard coming out as gay is, and by like, coming out as trans. I had that whole experience coming out about my favorite color. I was like, I was like, it was literally no. like, hot breezing. <laughs> My favorite color is actually pink. And she was like, oh, no, your favorite color is blue. And I was like, but it's not my favorite color. And she was like, yes, it is. And I was like, but my brain says it's not. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's not really like, interesting. Like, I'm in psych in college as well. And it's like the psych of like how you decide your favorite color is interesting. Because I'm pretty sure it has nothing to do with gender. Like, all these conservatives like Ben Shapiro would like you to believe. Yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty sure if you're a girl, you're default favorite color is in pink <laughs> but i mean for me yeah, no. is, but like, like <laughs> no exactly and like not all boys default favorite color is blue you know like m mine wasn't uh mine didn't default to pink well i don't think so but i i, I just like green because it was my mom's favorite color and yeah. i was obsessed with my mom my mom's <laughs> favorite color was purple so yeah so i like i like lilac though um Okay, but I feel like that's, like, it for the podcast. Like, we don't have any more we want to discuss, but we kind of discussed a lot longer than I should have, but sorry, teacher, I'm not cutting any... Professor, I mean, I'm not cutting any of this down. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, my God. Because this was good topics, but, um, thank you for joining me, Ash. I love you! Of course. Love you, too. Bye. Okay, um, we'll see you all next time. Bye! Bye, guys.